When installing these tiles, what we want to do is you've got your hooks and then the opposite side which are your receivers. So you should have your hooks and receivers and you're going to pick a direction in which you want them to go. So we've already laid out this section here but we're going to install currently. So in order to keep this running in the same pattern, we've got our hooks on the outside with our receivers here lined up. And all we're going to do is line these up, place them over them, and it doesn't take much pressure to just push them in. You're gonna hear a slight click noise. And they lock right in. And then what we'll do is we'll just repeat this pattern the whole way. Um, doesn't matter if you do one whole long run or if you're doing a left to right, but just make sure that your hooks and receivers, whatever pattern you start with, that that's what you continue with all the way through. And if you make a mistake and we need to uh, pull these up, it's just a matter of folding them in the opposite and then they pop right open. And then again to put them back, light pressure, you'll hear a little click. It's important that we don't jam these or force them because what's happening is if it's not clicking, then the hook and receiver is not lined up properly. And what we don't want to do is force it and then bend those uh, hooks in a direction that they're not supposed to go because then they'll end up cracking or breaking off and then it, it's not going to lock and secure. All right, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, application wise and why we have weed fabric down over the base material. So the base material, even compacted and in different parts of the country, um, you're gonna use, utilize different base. And in some instances, you may actually end up using just straight rock, um, just, just because you need the, uh, for drainage purposes, if you're in, a, in an area where there seems to be a lot of water pooling. But to handle all the different types of base that we would be using, because of these drain tiles, if you look, um, what we've got, even though it sits on, on these little uh, flat uh, spiked areas, they're small, their footprint's rather small, and with enough pressure, because these do flex a little bit, if you can see here. So we do get some movement and some flexing, and that's what they're designed for. So you can play athletics on it, and, you, and it provides some shock continuation. But, so what we want these to do is even though they are supposed to flex, we don't want them per se flexing and pushing into these spikes, pushing these into the rock material or the base. And if it's on rock and you step on it, you'll hear some of that crunching noise because it's pushing and flexing into the rock. So in order to stop that, what we like to do is run drain fabric over it. Now, it's important to use like a commercial grade fabric. So this here is a poly spun. Uh, it's essentially, it's plastic. And, but what it does, it allows water to um, uh, permeate through. But what's nice about it is it's extremely durable and um, can be a little difficult to cut sometimes. So you wanna make sure you're using a good sharp razor uh, or scissors. But how, how this works, it's very similar to taking saran wrap, which in and of itself is inherently weak. But when you stretch it over your bowl and you wrap it tightly and you create that tension, what it's doing is if you add any weight to the center, in order for that fabric or, or saran wrap, or in this case the, drain, um, the weed fabric to depress, it has to pull from the outsides. And so when you've got it locked in, um, from the sides, it doesn't want to, it, it, it has uh, the inability, it doesn't really want to push down into the, your base material because it has to pull from the side. So we've created no slack. So in this job, what we've done is we've installed the weed fabric and before we've actually pl placed the tile over it, we've pulled our yard staples and we've secured one side of the project and left one side loose and we've pulled this fabric tight and then laid the drain tile over. And then that prevents it from pushing through 
into the base causing a lot of material, uh, I'm sorry, your base material to push up in here, which would create low spots um, or potential areas for some puddling until the water was to, to transfer through. Now that we've got everything snapped into place, what we want to do now, because we're going to start to get ready to put in um, our outside borders. Now the important thing to remember is this is plastic. And just like any of the turf that we've been using, uh, any experience with turf, um, also turf expands. So it's susceptible to heat and, uh, and cold, so you're going to get the expansion and contraction. So um, just like when you're working with turf, you want to seam and, and, and uh, do your gluing and seaming and sanding um, when the material's been um, on, the, on the hottest, driest days when it's stretched out. In similar fashion, these drain tiles uh, will heat up and they'll actually expand underneath the turf. So if they've been sitting in the sun all day long, um, there's a extreme chance of that happening. So what you want to do is to allow a little bit of give or breathing room, if you will, in between your border and the drain tile. Now, if we run it up flush and this expands, the drain tile has nowhere to go, so it's going to start buckling. And what it'll do, you'll get raised humps or bumps and buckling underneath the turf um, throughout your project. So what you want to do, and you can use a um, box cutter, uh, carpet blades, uh, knife, um, you can use anything even including a saw, and you can come back and you want to cut these off and you want to give yourself approximately about a half inch uh, or less than a half inch. Um, on all sides. That allows this to expand and, and, and there's, there's a little bit of space in between so these will kind of push together too. But if you give yourself a half inch all the way around, that's enough for that floating tile underneath to stretch a little bit and it won't buckle. So what we want to do is you can either use a knife and just apply some pressure. Careful that we don't want to cut through underneath and those will cut and trim right off. Um, you can use uh, anything like little uh, um, gas operated or uh, battery operated saws to cut these. Just careful that you don't cut into this below this because there are rocks underneath. And obviously the high friction um, can generate some hot plastic, melted plastic. Um, so you can use a combination of whatever, but you just want to make sure that we cut these off and we get them out from underneath. You can see I'm just cutting these here. And these pop right out. Now I can go ahead and secure um, my outside edges all the way through and allow some breathing room.